Hello and welcome to this stunning post-glacial landscape that we call the Lake District National Park. Welcome to episode 3 of Glaciation in the Lake District. In this episode we're going to look at the erosional features that glaciers produce down on the main valley floor. We've got the U-shaped valley which we find ourselves in now with the steep valley sides and the flat bottom. We've got the hanging valleys which are high above us in the valley sides and we've got the truncated spurs in between these hanging valleys. So the first erosional feature we're going to look at is this U-shaped valley itself. Now thousands of years ago, when this U-shaped valley was forming, this valley would have looked completely different. It would be full of ice. Let's have a look now, back in time, at what that might have looked like. So here we have our U-shaped valley that we see today. We have our steep valley sides and our wide and flat valley floor. However, before the ice age, it looked very different to this. So let's have a look at what it could have looked like. So it wouldn't have been a U-shaped valley, it would have been a V-shaped valley. It would have had the source of the river up in the mountains, and this river or stream would wind its way down the river valley, passing the interlocking spurs into the main river channel in the main valley floor. Now, these interlocking spurs are here because the river wasn't strong enough to erode through the rock that the spurs made of up of, so it needed to find a way around it. So it snakes its way around these spurs, making its way into the main river channel. Our U-shaped valley doesn't have these interlocking spurs in it, so they must have gone somewhere. We'll have a look at that later. So our ice age is upon us now, and this river valley is going to fill up with ice. It's going to freeze the river and become deeper. So let's have a look at what it would look like when it's full of ice. So our valley would look like this. So we can see now that the tributary valleys that would have flown into the main river valley are now full of ice too. So something's going on there. The interlocking spurs are now covered with glacier ice. So this could be a clue to what happens to them later on when the ice continuously flows over them. So that's our river valley in the ice age. Now let's go and have a look at what features this glacier will form in the main valley. So we now know thousands of years ago this would have been a V-shaped valley which was nowhere near as deep and would have just had a small stream or river flowing through it. So how exactly did it change from that small V-shaped valley into this huge U-shaped valley? Let's have a look at an experiment now to show how glaciers actually carve these valleys out and turn a V-shaped valley into a U-shaped valley. So let's set the scene here. Now this is a cake, however this cake is representing our valley and how it is eroded. Down the centre of our cake we have our v-shaped valley which is quite narrow as it stands, not very deep and it has steep sides and a very narrow base. In the sides of our valley we have our tributary valleys. These are small valleys that join our main valley. Now before the ice age this would have just had flowing water in, so there wouldn't have been any ice here. So the erosion would have been taking place by water. You would have had abrasion, hydraulic action, solution, and attrition happening within the streams that are flowing in these valleys. Now our ice age is about to come on, and this valley is going to become frozen, and the water within it will turn to ice. Now when it does that, you will have erosion by abrasion, and poking and weathering from freeze fall weathering. So let's have a look at what the glacier will do to our valley here. So our glacier is going to fill our main V-shaped valley. Now this glacier is going to be large and it's going to have a high amount of erosive power. So this glacier is going to be represented by this ice cream scoop here. 
and we're going to erode this valley with this ice cream scoop in a minute. However, we also have small tributary valleys. Now these valleys are going to have much less ice in them than the main valley itself. So we can't erode it with a big ice cream scoop. They're not that powerful, the glaciers that are here. These are going to be eroded by a much smaller glacier, which is going to be represented by the teaspoon. So first of all, we're going to erode our main V-shaped valley. So our glacier will start at the top of the V-shaped valley and it will erode down the valley because when the temperatures drop, ice would have formed up here first and then would then generally move downhill as temperatures decreased further and more ice built up. So our glacier would come in from the top of our V-shaped valley and start eroding downwards. Now I'm gonna be removing this material by hand. However, this material would be transported by our glacier. So as the glacier moves downhill, as you can see, it is very, very powerful. And it is making the V-shaped valley much wider. It's making it much deeper. And it's making the base of it much flatter. Now, as our glacier comes to the end here, We can see the material that it's transported, the stuff that I've not removed, is built up in a pile at the end. Now that would be glacial moraine. Now we're gonna talk about that in a future episode. So we'll just remove that for the time being. And then we'll have a look at the smaller valleys, the smaller valleys in the valley slides, sides, that are going to be edited and changed by our smaller glaciers. So we've just moved around to the side of our main U-shaped valley. This has now been eroded by our glacier. It's much steeper on the sides, it's much deeper and has a wider base. Now at the sides, we said these need eroding too by our glaciers because in the ice age, they would have had glaciers in. However, these would have been much smaller. So the erosive power isn't as strong. However, they would still be able to erode in the valley sides. So they're not as strong However, they're still able to erode. Now what we form here, when these glaciers have eroded, is you can see we have got two smaller valleys within the valley side. Now when the glaciers have all melted, this erosive power stops. We don't have glaciers in contact with the valley sides and the valley floor to make them deeper and wider. We do have a small stream now flowing down it, but this erosive power has diminished. So what we have, we've had differential rates of erosion. In the main U-shaped valley, we've had the large glacier that's come down and made it very deep, very wide, and the sides very steep. We've had the glaciers at the side from the tributary streams. These have also been eroding, but because the glaciers have been much smaller, they cannot erode as, at a, as quick rate as the one in the main new ship valley. So this leaves behind smaller valleys hanging in the valley sides. So these are called hanging valleys because when the valley ends, there's a steep drop which takes it down into the main valley floor. It's happened here and happened here. In between these hanging valleys, where there was once a spur that led all the way to the floor of the main river valley, this has been chopped off. There's a large, steep cliff face. That's what we call an interlocking spur. So now our glaciers have melted, we have got some new features. We've got the large U-shaped valley. We have got hanging valleys in the side of the large U-shaped valley. And in between our hanging valleys, we have a truncated spur. Now let's go and have a look at what these features look like in real life.
So here we have it, we have our finished product, our glaciers have melted and formed the features behind me. To my right, we have the hanging valley itself. We've got a smaller U-shaped valley in the main valley side. The main valley is to my left. The hanging valley has a new feature flowing out of it, a waterfall. So the stream that now flows through this large U-shaped valley comes to the edge of the main valley sides and because it is high above the main valley itself, it has to get down into the main valley. It does that by flowing down a waterfall. You can also see some truncated spurs to my left. The main valley is coming down the side of the pyramidal peak behind me. There's some arets that are coming down from that pyramidal peak, but them arets stop suddenly to form a truncated spur. This arete would have been eroded by the glacier coming down the main U-shaped valley, truncating it, making a truncated spur. Let's head down now into the main U-shaped valley itself to get a summary of this episode. So there we have it. This is our finished product. We have our deep U-shaped valley with almost vertical sides and a very flat valley, valley bottom with a misfit stream running through the centre, which you can hear next to me here. Back in the distance, you can see gaps in the valley sides. They would be our hanging valleys. They form with a small tributary stream now in them. In between those hanging valleys, you have these flat-fronted truncated spurs too. There's one right at the end of the valley, up there on my left-hand side. So there we have it for this episode. We've finished looking at our erosional features of glaciers. But glaciers don't just erode, they deposit too when they start to melt. Please join me next time when we look at the different features that form when a glacier starts to deposit, drop the material that it's been eroding for thousands of years.